fatigued from the long flight, Yunjin yawns as she turns on her laptop. She landed in Rio de Janeiro just two hours ago, but her work cannot wait. Looking through her mailbox, she spots a dozen unread emails from an unknown user addressing her by name. Few know her as Yun Jin. Most only know her as Magnum Opus. She clicks on an email. A graphic, detailed description of someone's plan to murder her and the trickster. Signed, the trickster's number one fan. Death threat. An abnormally specific one with a picture of her in the hotel lobby. Before the death of Nospin, she ignored such threats. But now, her manicured hand shakes as she reaches for her phone. The threat is too serious to be taken lightly. She calls her security crew for an emergency meeting. Outings are restricted to recording sessions and concert rehearsals only. A bodyguard is assigned to the trickster and herself. Everyone complies with the new rules, except for the trickster, who argues against staying on the hotel premises. No surprises there. Her relationship with the trickster has been on the rocks for months now. He challenges every decision she makes, his ego pushing her patience to its limit. Because of their frequent creative disagreements, their next album is behind schedule, forcing her to produce three new songs while overseeing his tour. Her security expert confirms that the phones are ready. At her request, a tracking GPS application was installed on all company phones. No one else knows about this. If the trickster keeps testing her patience, this app will come in handy. It's for his own good. And hers. Yun Jin pours herself a cup of coffee at the recording studio, stifling another yawn. Her temples are throbbing. The jet lag is hitting her hard. Plus, the constant threat of a crazed fan prevents her from getting any sleep at night. On her way back to the booth, she notices that the studio next to theirs is occupied. She peeks inside. A young man is laughing in the recording booth. He has an easy-going smile that could sell thousands of magazines. She recognizes the man at the mix table, Alano Muse a semi-famous producer from San Diego. What is he doing in Rio? Some bits of fresh gossip could help re-energize her. She taps on the door's window. The door creaks open. He remembers her, of course. Who could forget the magnum opus? She invites herself in as he plays the track he's working on. A slow, predictable build for the bass line. Formulaic. Too safe to be of any interest. Then... An erythral voice fills the room. Yun Jin almost spills her coffee. The artist's voice is crystalline. His range is powerful yet nuanced. Who is that? Alano tells Lucas, the young artist, to drop down his pitch a notch. Bad call. The track should be building up to push Lucas's range instead of confining it to a boring generic sound. She walks up to Lucas and hands him her business card. Contact me when you're ready to become a serious artist. A pang of regret hits her on the way out. She said those exact words to the trickster many years ago. Back then, she looked forward to working with him. Those days are long gone. At the hotel bar, Yunjin takes a sip of her cold caipirinha, the sugarcane liquor smoothening the sour burst of lime. Why did she give that young artist... Lucas, her business card. It's not like she can produce him. Another pang of nostalgia. Another sip of caipirinha. She misses it. Hunting new talents. The raw creed of chaos of designing a bold sound. The adrenaline rush of the first album. Things are different now. Her time is split between handling the trickster's growing ego and following a generic, endless production cycle. Is this the cost of success? Producing music that makes her cringe? Not to mention handling arguments about bodyguards and curfews while being threatened by a crazed, psychotic fan. Her life is so different from what she imagined as a little girl. Back then, music was the only good thing she had. 
She created tracks in her bedroom, imagining a stage of bright lights where she was safe, loud, and free. That is what pop music is to her, a vital dose of unapologetic release. But now, thanks to her success, she lives in a golden cage. Down goes the Kaipirinha. Her bartender gives her a glance and she nods. Keep them coming. She calls Mighty One executives for a virtual meeting and gives them the news. Once she finishes the three tracks in Rio, she is done with the trickster. She will move on to producing the launch of trainees. A Mighty One executive cuts her off. They have more urgent business to discuss. Damaging rumors are trending online. A disturbed, delusional fan claims to have murdered someone at a trickster concert. Yun Jin closes her fist, her long manicured nails digging into her palms, anything to keep her hands from shaking again. She will handle this mediatic storm for her brand's sake, but after Rio, she is done with the trickster, whether Mighty One is willing or not.